they're not even pleasing themselves is the key thing. They're not pleasing themselves or anybody else. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> Let the record show that was you, not me. <laughs> Society's family unit is in crisis as less and less people are making the commitment of a lifelong partnership together. It has been normalized, encouraged, and easier than ever to just throw in the towel when the going gets tough. With time at a premium, start by spending 20 minutes per week gaining thought-provoking inspiration towards a journey of self-improvement, ultimately improving your marriage, your family, your health, and your home. When someone crosses the line, what do you do about it? This is part three in our series on boundaries, and today we are tackling enforcing boundaries. We have talked the talk. Now it's time to walk the walk. This step can be difficult, and there are many reasons why. Today we will wrap up the conversation with more tips and reasons why enforcing boundaries is so important. In the previous two episodes, we established and communicated our boundaries. But what do we do when boundaries are challenged? Remember, we have personal, professional, social, and family boundaries. Enforcing these isn't easy. In fact, it can be the hardest part of having boundaries for most people. The reasoning is as simple as the need to avoid uncomfortable conflict. Most people don't want to appear rude or engage in conflict, especially with someone they care about. If people get upset at your boundaries, do you still value them as a friend? To enforce boundaries, you must be clear on them. That's another tricky part about having boundaries, but it's vital to maintaining healthy relationships for the long term. If you're not consistent, you and others won't know where the line is and if it's been crossed. Knowing exactly what you want puts you in the driver's seat of managing your time and energy. Also, if you back down on a boundary that you have communicated, it will now be even harder in the future to establish your limits and rules. Kids are very good at testing boundaries, and they will push back again and again. It's vital to a child's growth to know what the rules are so they know what they can or can't get away with. You will earn more respect if you are solid with your boundaries. And I actually have one example of this this last week. Our daughter can be a bit sassy once in a while, and she was sassing her mama a little bit too much, and I gave her a warning saying you know what happens when you have a punishment because we don't spank or hit or anything like that. We don't do time out. Her punishment typically is a chore that she doesn't particularly like. I warned her that if she sassed me one more time that she would be washing doors. They can get a little dusty or a little gritty from little hands all the time. Of course, she sassed me one more time and I said, that's great. Let me get your magic eraser out for you. And I don't make her do all of the doors in the whole house. She does like four when she does that. And we've we've done this now a couple times. So it's mm-hmm. starting to set in mm-hmm. for her mentally that, okay, I've been warned. I know what that mm-hmm. punishment is. And we follow it up. And ever since then, uh, for the rest of the week, we haven't really had a lot of sass. No, we haven't. And here's the thing. I said that and got out her magic eraser and she begged and pleaded with me, Mom, no, please, just just one more chance. Just give me one more chance. Yeah. And I, no, nope, 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 nope. I, you can cry. You can whine. You can bat your little eyes at me. But I gave you the one warning and you stepped over that boundary. Kids will <laughs> test your boundaries over and over again. And as soon as you go back on your rules that you've set, A kid knows that they just need to push harder the next time to get what they want. So if they protest and cry and scream and yell because they didn't get what they wanted and you cave in and let them have it, well, what happens the next time you say no? That's right. They're going to throw a fit again and it will get worse this time if you try to say no again because you gave in last time. Another good example beyond even kids is a personal boundary. So... We've been trying to be strict on our keto diet again. And when we're eating out, there's always the temptation. There's the temptation to, you know, get a burger with a bun on it or to have a few fries. Oh, it's just a few fries. It's no big deal. Well, next thing you know, you do what we did. You fall off the wagon. You start eating 
Mexican food, you start having a bun with your burger, you start eating the fries, you start having all sorts of things you shouldn't have. Personal boundary is just as important as a boundary that you have with someone else, with your kids, or what have you. Another thing about boundaries that's important is that people may forget the boundary, or maybe it was a little unclear the first time you tried to set it. People don't want to ask a dumb question, and it may remind you that you need to communicate that boundary a little bit more effectively, and a reminder is okay. It's not a bad thing. It really helps cement that boundary. We need to make sure that we're clear, and we need to be willing to back it up. In the last couple episodes, we talked about some examples how to establish the boundary and communicate the boundary. And now we're gonna talk about those examples and enforcing that boundary. So you're at a restaurant and they bring you the wrong order. You have been assertive and you decided to correct your server. You communicated that you didn't get what you ordered in a polite manner. If your order gets messed up again, how do you respond? You enforce your boundary again, you speak up and make it right. Once again, your kids consistently get out of bed past their bedtime, should you allow that. They will continue to do it because they now don't respect the rules. You reinforce the boundary by putting them back to bed and not allowing them to bend the rules, no matter how tired you are. (laughs) And the important part of that is not to get emotional either. I know that sounds easy. It's important to let them know you're not doing this because you're angry, you're not frustrated, even though deep down you really are, but you're doing this because it's the rule. That's the important part. It's just the rule. This is what we do. And then lastly, you have a lot on your plate on a Saturday, and without warning, your family drops by and hangs out for several hours. Tell your family to not just drop in, but to give you time to get dressed, pick up the house, and etc. So you're in the right mindset to be present. And also, you can adjust your schedule if you have a heads up. Reinforce your boundary. Stay consistent and communicate the same message in the future so that your boundary with your family or friends popping by is established. Going back to the importance of boundaries, I'm going to take a step back for a second. A good thing to remember is enforcing your boundaries will give you confidence because it helps you manage your schedule and know where you stand. Others will see that and they will respect you more because you've shown your value to yourself and to your time. Again, if you don't value your time and value yourself, why would anyone else? What causes this? Well, emotional insecurity can be a a large factor in a lack of good boundaries because it shows that we don't value ourselves enough to protect our time, we don't have goals, we don't have a schedule, so we become a doormat. This occurs when someone is constantly seeking validation from other people, when they're not their own point of origin Mm -hmm. or happiness or however you want to look at that. Questions to ask yourself, do you feel like you constantly give more than you get? Do you get noticed? Do you get appreciated? Whether it be at work, whether it be at home, whether it be with friends, whatever the case. Do you feel like you're failing over and over again in different aspects of your life? Do you feel like you're stuck in a rut and not progressing towards your aspirations? A good example that we had personally was prior to COVID, we were working in our offices. I was traveling quite a bit, but we were picking up and dropping off KJ from school. We were going to the gym. We were trying to meet with friends. We were doing family functions, and we had Braden, and it started to occur to us that wow, this is going to be a very tight schedule. And many people deal with this. We were definitely not alone. But at night, we would go to bed. And again, this is prior to even having Braden, so we were going to be busier. But we would go to bed at night and feel guilty and have this shame we were carrying around because we felt like we didn't have enough time for our our daughter. We didn't know what she was doing at school. I mean, not very well. We didn't have time for each other as husband and wife. We were lucky to get in one good conversation a day about real stuff. Before I passed out. (laughs) From exhaustion. And and (laughs) there were days we didn't feel like we got a good workout. We weren't sticking to a diet very well. Or we weren't fully functioning at work like we should have been. We didn't get the house fixed up like we needed to. We weren't making progress on things. We just felt like we were failing on everything because, Mm -hmm. for the most part, we were trying to please too many people at once. We were trying to be too many things to too many others. Mm -hmm. And... We weren't doing any one of them right. 
And this is something that I have to still, even though I am not in my full-time position anymore, I still have to establish boundaries within my freelancing business and then the aspirations and goals that I have surrounding that. And that's something that I'm working through right now is making sure that the things that I'm doing that that bring in an income are priority number one. And the, the secondary things that I'm learning or developing that are pro bono right now are not completely on the back burner, but there needs to be a boundary. Like, you know what? I don't work on my clients on the weekend, so why should I work on my pro bono stuff on the weekend? Unless I want to. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. And of course, I want to. I want to always do, do my job and, and coach and things like that. But I need to make sure that it fits in with my family as well. On the weekends, my family is priority number one. And if that means that I don't text you back until Monday, that means I don't text you back until Monday. That's a boundary that I've set with people that I work with now. Some other examples that some people might have going on in their lives right now. Have any of you had a boss that won't stick to a certain rule? I know that I have. (laughs) Probably all have, yeah. Yeah. They cater to one employee and let them do something that's inconsistent with others. How much respect do you have for said boss? I have lost a lot of respect for a lot of bosses and coworkers Mm -hmm. in my past because Mm -hmm. of their inconsistencies. It just depends on... Who's the flavor of the week, basically. Mm -hmm. And that can be really, really frustrating when you tend to be someone like me who likes to be varied by the, by the book. And of course, the industry that I came in, there's a, came from, there's a lot of laws around treating people equally (laughs) in the multifamily industry. It's called fair housing. (laughs) And when the people who you're supposed to be looking up to are not consistent, with something as important as that, it can be very, very frustrating. It's pretty demoralizing for the the people that are following the rules. Yes. Um, makes you think, okay, I'm following the rules, but yet I don't seem to be getting any extra favor for it or anything mm-hmm. else. And so-and-so over here does whatever they want. They show up late. They don't follow through. But, hey, they like each other, so seems like it doesn't matter. They go matter. drink together after work, so it's okay. Also, another example, the parents that let their kids do whatever they want. Maybe not whatever they want, but maybe they don't have a bedtime or they don't have a curfew or there's not really any restraints at a restaurant or a grocery store. Do you have a lot of respect for those parents? Do do you feel like they have their stuff together, for lack of a better term? Yeah. Or that friend or family member? that always cancels or goes back and forth on things because they don't manage their time. They allow others to change their schedule, whether others being other friends change their schedule, their spouse changes their schedule for them. You don't have a lot of respect for that person. They're not able to set their own boundaries and stand their ground and enforce them. Right. And they also don't respect you enough to give you a heads up maybe they maybe they waited till the last minute because they were still working on excuses for (laughs) not following through or maybe they didn't want to say no in advance they didn't want to hurt feelings but for whatever reason they feel like if they wait until the last minute it's somehow okay i i've never quite understood that and i've been guilty of that before i sometimes wait too long to say hey i may not be able to to come up or I may not be able to finish this or, you know. Yeah, we do. I mean, we, we waited till what, an hour before last night to tell my parents that we'd meet them for dinner. (laughs) (laughs) And we do that because honestly, it depends on how we feel and if our children are acting crazy. But here's the difference is that we communicate that to my parents in the, in the beginning at the, at the beginning of the day when they say, Hey, do you want to meet for dinner tonight? Not sure yet. It's going to be, a game time decision because we don't know what this day is going to be like. We've established and communicated that boundary. If if the kids are acting a fool all day, then we will enforce that boundary and we will say, nope, we will not be meeting you for dinner because we are not going to take these hooligans out in public and stress ourselves out. One of the last examples that 
I'm still very passionate about. It kind of goes into the masculinity episode that we did a little bit while back. Is the person that lets their spouse set all the rules and make all of the decisions. If you haven't listened to the masculinity episode, go listen to it because this is a huge thing for me. It's a partnership. It does not matter if you're the guy getting booty from your wife. Do not let her rule your life and do not let her make all of the decisions. You need to establish that boundary. It needs to be a partnership and you need to man up (laughs) and preside over your family. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And this could even be also someone that sets all the rules for the kids or lack thereof. It's someone who takes care of anything social with friends, uh, you know, setting up all the plans and communicating everybody and doing all the work. You know, it's okay to lead. There's nothing wrong with somebody leading certain things. You know, we usually have someone that leads the household, but maybe not to the extent we're talking about. We're talking about someone who's so passive in making those decisions that they just let the other one run all over them. And you can tell. You, you can kind of tell the difference and just make someone look like they have no backbone. You know, they, they need to be able to stand up. I mean, you ask them, hey, are you guys able to come over Saturday night? Uh, geez, I don't know. Let me go check with my wife. I mean, that's fine. It's okay to communicate. <laughs> it's okay to communicate, but it's it can get so extreme to where it's like they can't even make a simple decision yeah. without saying something you know now if it if it involves a financial commitment or a big time commitment or something yes definitely communicate that because like you said it's a partnership but it can go too far it can go just way too far if you if you can't spend five dollars without checking with your spouse first if that's okay if if you have to check in if it's okay to go hang out with a friend every single time Mm -hmm. i mean again communication's key but there comes a time when you need to be able to think for yourself. Mm -hmm. People pleasers try to please everyone and they wind up pleasing no one because they aren't making sure that they're getting their needs met and they aren't protecting their self worth. Important things to remember about enforcing boundaries. We've said some of these before. Learn to say no. It may stun or shock people at first. They may be taken aback for a moment, but if they're worth keeping around, if they're really your friend or they they really care about you, th- they'll listen. They'll understand. It may take a minute, especially if you haven't had boundaries before. Remember to be direct. Use I statements. Don't be using the you do this, you do that. Don't be accusatory. Make it about you. This is your boundary. Say, I want this. I don't want to do that. And remember not to be flimsy. Know what you want. Be confident in it and stick to it. This will take practice. You won't be great at it right off the bat we're still practicing yeah and we have to be very disciplined Mm -hmm. not just with kids i mean yeah (laughs) if you have a child you'll be practicing for the rest of your life how to set (laughs) boundaries with them it doesn't stop when they're 18 (laughs) but 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 they will learn how to do it they will learn how to do it as adults Mm -hmm. too yeah if if you've practiced it enough with them they have a lot of experience to draw back on this isn't something that i think we knew about much in the past and i think people are, are realizing hey, this is kind of important to get some of this ingrained in our heads. Mm -hmm. To get, And you get so good at it after a while that you don't even realize you're doing it. It just sort of comes naturally. I feel like I was taught if I would be a people pleaser, then I would be successful. Right. And that's not the truth. I am more successful now that I have established professional boundaries. Not only successful because you're reaching some of your goals and you're, you're getting more of what you want, but you're more fulfilled. You feel mm-hmm. better mm-hmm. because you, you're you clear. You know, this is what I want. This is who I am. That's what I mean by when I say, be your own point of origin. You need to be secure with yourself. Remember why you set the boundaries. This isn't about shutting people out, but they'll know where you stand. And you'll know where you stand and how to get more of what you want. And you'll need to keep evaluating this. It's a process. You'll need to keep evaluating your approach on certain boundaries, see if they're appropriate. Maybe they need an adjustment sometimes. You'll get there. So for this week's call to order, you've determined what boundary you want to set. You figured out how to communicate it, and now take action and start enforcing it. We recommend writing this down and revisiting it frequently. 
Start thinking about your next boundary that you want to establish. Keep practicing and work on consistency. Build up to bigger goals, but remember to walk before you run. If you're ready for your marriage and family dynamic to thrive and not just survive, all it takes is 20 minutes or less joining us each week. It begins with a journey of self-improvement while you sit in the carpool lane, commute to work, squeeze in a workout, or get halfway through folding that laundry pile. Be sure to check out the blog at thefamilyorder.com and follow us on Facebook at The Family Order. If you're ready to start your journey, be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss new episodes every Monday.